413 WNBC. This is McCartney and uh, Michael Jackson, who had bones shoved in his nose to make him look like a white man. Hired by WNBC Radio to bring in ratings and advertising revenues, Howard Stern makes his living abusing and attacking anyone and anything. I can tell you that uh, the Jews did not kill Jesus. I wasn't there, but I have a strong suspicion it was two Puerto Rican guys. On a clear night, Stern's show can be heard all along the eastern seaboard from Canada to Florida. Infectious sores on your face? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In 18 months, Stern has captured his target audience, but the ratings tide seems to be turning against him. He's also managed to offend just about every minority in New York. Pretty sad. It's amazing what black people will do to look like white people. They shove bones in their nose and squeeze their eyelids. NBC. Stern recently launched an on-air search to find a black woman who would pass for white. He does leering imitations of homosexuals. I had a sexual fantasy about tying Bugs Bunny up with a piece of nylon cord. I swear, I know I'm sick. And talks about his own attempts to breastfeed his infant daughter. Is this new wave radio or the sleaziest game in town? Is what we hear on the air, is that really you or is that the act? Oh, that's me. I think there's two, two people inside of me. And I'm not saying I'm schizophrenic or anything, but when I get on the air, I just unleash everything I'm feeling. And when I get off the air, it's like I uh, clam up inside. I, um, I hold everything in. But what you're hearing on the air is pretty much me. You think that's good or bad for radio? Oh, it's real good. The, uh, I'm making radio interesting. Some people I, feel I, I, Howard is making radio dangerous. Lance Ringel from the National Lance Gay Task Force is one of them. He was making some remarks about AIDS I mean, a back and forth with this character that made it sound like you could be in the same room with a gay person and catch AIDS. And back in May and June, people were dying as they're dying now. And there was a lot of hysteria that people believed this, that simply being around gay people meant you could catch AIDS. So it was not just unfunny, it was adding to dangerous misperceptions that people had. And that, that was the last straw. It's not just nameless, faceless targets. Howard will even use his own wife, Allison. What's your wife say to you when you come home at night and you've been saying she's six months pregnant and she's begging for sex? She thinks it's terrible because she keeps, she thinks this is terrible. I said, well, I'm sorry. I can't control what I do when I get on the air. I can't control myself. I really cannot control myself. Howard, if your own wife says that about you. I don't care. I how can't. How can you expect anybody else to understand you? Because I can't control myself. I'm out of control. I'm like Michael Jackson. <laughs> I went on the air and I said, if you people, if there was ever a dream I had, my biggest dream was that they would elect me king of the world and I would solve the crime problem by taking a gun, sticking up to criminals' ears and blowing their damn brains out. What you would do as soon as a guy was convicted for burglary or rape, he would come into my room and I would take my gun and I would shoot him in the ear and watch his brains splatter all over the place. <laughs> Howard, do you ever shock yourself with things you say? Um, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes things come out of my mouth. I don't know where they're coming from. So who is this Howard Stern? Stern is 30 years old, born and raised in Roosevelt, Long Island. He's married to a psychotherapist named Allison, and together they have a six-month-old daughter. Despite his six-figure income, Stern still rides the subway to work. I'm really insecure. About what? Well, I'm always afraid I'm going to lose my job because of the type of radio show I do, and i got a wife and a kid now. I'm insecure as hell except when he's on the radio. All right, blank a doodle do. How would you fill that in? Well, you must have job security. What is your answer? Cock a doodle do. Cock a doodle do. All right, that's a good answer. How you doing there, Michael Jackson? I had no women. A doodle do. <laughs> no women a dude will do. That's very funny. Of course, it's not a match. Every afternoon from 4 to 8, he and his cohorts outraged their way through four hours of talk with just enough music to keep management happy. Each week, some 900,000 people tune into Stern. WNBC 545. Stern would be just another obnoxious loudmouth if it weren't for the fact that he has a genuine comedic talent. Some call him the cutting edge of comedy. Comedian David Brenner. I think Howard Stern is brilliant. I think the only thing wrong with Howard Stern is I believe he should be on television, not on radio. I think he, is a, he could be a breath of fresh air. 
He could have a TV show late at night. I start him late at night or on cable that would knock this country out. But that so-called edge seems to cut both ways. Often, Stern appears to be more crude than comic. You're a housewife? Yep. Mm -hmm. Kids? One daughter. One daughter? Did you breastfeed her? Yep. Very good. You're very liberated. What age did you stop? Well, how old was the kid when you stopped breastfeeding? Uh, about four months. Why'd you stop? What, are you uptight? Did she stop no, biting? No, no. Did she bite your nip? She got started on regular food and then she wasn't anymore. Okay. That's what happened to my wife. She got bit a couple of times, but she's still doing it. She's like a masochist or something. I'm going to keep doing it. I don't care. It's important. The baby needs her nutrition. Yeah, but I need you to have, I need you to have two of those things, man, for me to like you cosmetically. I want the baby bite them off. Why is it, though, that you feel that you need to use everything? Got to, because it makes the show interesting. I'm into making a show that's really interesting. Howard is number one with his target audience, men 25 to 54. But since joining the station in August of 1982, Stern has lost over 200,000 listeners and has dropped from first place to fourth place. WNBC general manager Randall Bongarden insists he's not worried. In your mind, Howard Stern's successful? Very. But for how long? Howard's WNBC honeymoon seems to be drawing to a close. I am probably on a roll right now that will get me fired within a year or so. I will probably be fired, but I'm willing to accept that. In fact, he's already seeking other employment. Recently, he spent a large part of his program soliciting job offers. Ironically, it was a hard-hitting, decidedly unfriendly piece on CBS's 60 Minutes that set Howard off. WNBC management prevented Howard from defending himself in that piece. Why? Because they're afraid. I'm not afraid of anybody. It was a decision made by NBC Radio Management. Which would be you. Certainly. Okay, why? Uh, it, that's really not something I can talk about. No, I'm not Jewish. All right, what are you? Uh, Protestant. Good, we're going to let you play because the Jews have been getting everything in this country, and now we're going to let the Protestants have their chance. Okay. You see, if you make fun of ethnic groups, as long as you make fun of everybody and you have a good time with it, and they know you're not really, you know, you know, you can tell a racist from a guy who's having fun. But you know what? There are racists who listen to you. They're out there, they're saying, go get them, Howard. Well, go they're, get they're them, Howard. stupid people. That's who you're playing to, well, Howard. who cares? Those are the people that you're fostering. That's, that's fine. I mean, whoever wants to listen can listen and interpret it their own way. I just got to do my own thing. Then you have to talk about responsibility. I have no responsibility. The only responsibility I have is to make people happy, have fun on the radio, and make them listen and laugh. That's my responsibility. Because of certain indiscreet remarks by Don Imus and Howard Stern, WNBC Radio apologizes to the following. The National Organization for Women, huh? the New York Chapter of Hadassah, Governor <laughs> Cuomo, the New York... While WNBC management playfully apologizes for Stern in their advertising, they continue to air his program despite his own admission. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, I have no, no regrets about anything I say on the air.